thank you for joining us again for another exciting Bible study, God's Word Alive. Wow, tonight, tonight, I believe this is the most important message that we have ever shared with you. I really believe it. And you're going to see too as we dig into this exciting message. Brian, let's take care of the housekeeping so we can dig right in. Okay. Welcome to each one of you tonight. It's always more fun uh, when you join us. First of all, thank you for joining us. And uh, a lot of fun when you can send comments or maybe a Bible text that uh, come to your mind that you'd like shared as we go through this study. And also, um, if you come to this broadcast with uh, burdens or something you'd like us to pray about, at the end of our study tonight, we'll have a time of prayer. So please, at the bottom in your comment section, put a prayer request in. Yes. And uh, we will pray for it. If you're listening to this perhaps later, not live, go ahead and put a prayer request in and we take care of those and watch them and we'll pray during the week for them. Mm -hmm. If you would prefer, you can text to 479-220-7107. That's 479-220-7107 and we're monitoring that. If you prefer to send in a prayer request that way, you can do that as well. But uh, please let us know you're here Join in the discussion that makes everything a whole lot more fun. That's right. Yeah, team, you have prayer for us? It's very, before we open God's Word. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, more than ever before, we need your wisdom this evening. Not only the wisdom, but we also need the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we're dealing with a very, very urgent message, the beginning of this message. And we'll spend many weeks in it, Lord, unpacking all of these messages, all three of these angels' messages, to the world you're at the close of Earth's history. Lord, we can see what's happening around us. The indicators that you've pointed us to, to watch for, to know when you're coming is at hand. And Lord, we can see many of them taking place around us. Lord, prepare our hearts. Have us ready. We know that's the job of the Holy Spirit, to have us ready and to keep us ready for your coming. Lord, we do not, do not want to miss out. Help us to take these messages to heart, to respond to them in the right way, so we'll end up on the right side. That's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Friends, God is about to do something big. And before, last week, we looked at this, and we, through Scripture, we, we learned that that. When God is about to do something big and life-changing for His children, He always lets us know. Amos 3, 7. Do you have that scripture, Brian? I've got it. Listen Amos, to this scripture here. Amos, Amos 3, 7. Amos this 3, 7. is good news for all of us. It says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless He reveals His secret to His servants, the prophets. Yeah. No secrets with God. He right. wants us to know. He wants us. He to loves know. us. That's yeah, he wants he, us to yeah, know. Yeah, he, he 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 don't want to surprise us because he loves us. He wants us to all be prepared. We we looked last week. We looked at the flood, the time of the flood. Noah, Noah. Could you imagine Noah knowing what he knew from his heart? How he was crying out to the people. Oh, please repent. Come 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 into the ark. Come into the ark. There's going to be a flood. I mean, God sent Noah. And for 120 years, he proclaimed that message uh, that to come out of the world and get in the ark. It's sad that we know that they only made fun of him. Uh, and I, I said this last week, but I would imagine that, you know how you had the seven wonders of the world? Mm -hmm. That I imagine that would be the number one wonder of the world. <laughs> Why? Because God wanted everyone to know. He wanted everyone to be warned. He wanted, he wanted that message to go to the whole world before the end would come and it had the flood. We know that uh, God sent a messenger also before Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. God sent a messenger uh, down to warn them. Uh, we see this God over and over. We, we know that during the Babylonian captivity, Israel, uh, God sent prophet after prophet warning them, messenger after messenger warning them what was going to happen. They ignored it. They ignored it. It's just the way of God to to do. He warns his people. He has messengers beforehand. We know that before Jesus come the first time that God had a messenger. Who was it? John, John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist. And, and a whole series of prophets who oh, yeah. the Old Testament oh, yes. were also yes, yeah. right. And so 
God has got a message. Something big is about to happen, friends. This is so serious. Something huge is about to happen. Jesus Christ is coming again. And he's Amen. coming soon. I mean, you look at all the signs. Jesus talked about that in Matthew chapter 24, all the signs that was going to be taking place on the earth right before he comes. Every one of them is being fulfilled to a T uh, over and over. We looked at other scriptures last week to prove that we are, in fact, living at the time of the end. So God has got, just like always before, God has got a message, a message that will be proclaimed to all the world right before he comes. And it's called the three angel message. And it's found in Revelation chapter 14. And it's verse 6 through 12. Now we're going to cover this over a period of several several, uh, several Wednesday nights. Uh, we're going to do that. What we're going to do tonight is lay the table. We're going to lay it out there. And so we kind of give you a picture of what it's going to look like. But it's Revelation 14, 6 through 12. Uh, right before Jesus comes. Now, at the end, would you read... Uh, Revelation 14, verse 14. Yeah, so the reason, the reason why these messages are, are so urgent mm -hmm. is because the very next scene that shows up after those messages are proclaimed is the following. It's found in Revelation chapter 14, verse 14. This is what John sees right after the last angel proclaims its message. Then I looked, and there was a white cloud, and one like the Son of Man was seated on the cloud with a gold crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Another angel came out of the sanctuary crying out with a loud voice to the one who was seated on the cloud, Use your sickle and reap, for the time to reap has come since the harvest of the earth is ripe. Oh, very clear. So who's sitting yeah. on this cloud? Jesus. Jesus is. That's right. What do you do with the sickle? Yeah. Harvesting. 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 Yeah. Harvesting. And Jesus yeah. talks about harvesting in many of his parables. That's right. <clears throat> yeah. And so the time has come once these messages, messages have, pro have been proclaimed, it's time for Jesus to come. No this second chances. No other message either. Yeah. No other message Nothing. after that. This That's is it. it. This is it. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> as we were preparing for this, I'm saying, guys, this is so important. I mean, this is just like Noah. Uh, his message saying, get in the ark, get in the ark. I mean, it's time. It, Jesus is our ark. I watched Friday night a portion of Sight and Sound Theater presentation of Noah. It was fascinating to sit with my five-year-old granddaughter as the door closes and the water comes and people are hollering and screaming and, and to watch a five-year-old realize yeah. that the people she had just seen were not on the ark and were not going to make it. And it was interesting to watch a five-year-old Grapple with the reality of what we're talking about tonight is that God had been inviting people into ark for 120 years, roughly. Yeah. And but there was a moment, there was a time when the door closed. The door shut. And, and the harvest, in this case, the floods, right? right. Like, yeah, right. And yeah. so the, the table is set, and it's an inviting table. Anybody but, can come, and anybody can come. Everybody. But there is a there is a serious note to the the yeah. invitation as well. That's right. That's right. So, what we're going to do, we're going to look at this three angel message here. We're going to dig into it. We're going to lay it out there. Uh, and we're going we're to break it down in bite-sized pieces. First off, uh, when, when, are, when, when, are these, when are they going to be proclaimed? When? Well, like we said, we're just, right, right before now, Jesus right coming. Before, right right before, yeah. Right. And, and it's interesting that while they are going to be proclaimed right before, we get a sneak peek. We get a sneak peek every day if we open up Revelation 14. We get a sneak peek of what this plea and this, and this, this invitation from God is. Yes. So it's not, it is yet, it's reserved for the end. It's going to come at a very special time. Mm -hmm. But I also get to see God's call on my heart every day if I choose to read these verses. That's right. Yeah. Every day he's knocking. I love the oh, picture in Revelation 3.20. He's not, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking at our heart's door. Which brings, why, why are they being proclaimed? I mean, why, why is a three-angel message being proclaimed? So it's, it's God's last ditch effort yeah. to save, to get as many people to respond to his loving invitation. Yeah. He says the ark is open, mm -hmm. but there will be a day when the door will shut. Please, yeah. come into the yeah. ark. Yeah. You don't have to Nothing what I'm going to tell you is going to happen in the third angel's message 
should happen to you. Yes. You have all the opportunity in the world mm -hmm. to choose now, choose now to be on my side. Mm -hmm. If you're on my side, the third angel means absolutely nothing to you. Yeah. And, and that's this, for the people that don't yeah. respond this is what's to this happen. call. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And, yeah. and to me, the why are they being proclaimed? It is the greatest, grandest, most amazing evidence of the character of God. Yeah. A God who says, I'm coming, but boy, I, I, I've got to, I've got to talk to my people one more time. Yeah, yeah. And you think about what, he, anybody to what he has invested, Nobody. what he has invested in us is is un, unthinkable almost. Yeah. And he wants everyone yeah. saved that he can. So this is the heart of God. Yeah. Playing out. And so, and so, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to look at when they're proclaimed. Am I right? Yeah. We're going to look at why they're being proclaimed. We're going to look at. Who does the proclaiming? Yep. And to whom is it being proclaimed? So okay. that's kind of the the framework for what we're going to talk about tonight. Yeah. And it's kind of just more academic things. Mm -hmm. We'll get into the meat of the yep. messages a little bit later on in our studies. But this is kind of taking care of like academic things. Okay. And what, and do, what do some of the things mean in, in this? Uh, and we had mentioned about passage. setting the table. We talked before we came on. I mean... We're setting the table tonight. We're putting the plates and the forks and, and the solid forks and, and the cups in the right place. We're setting a, an incredibly beautiful table that is going to then be the framework for multiple weeks to follow. Okay. Yeah. So, who does the proclaiming? It says it's three angels. I mean, it says three angel message. So, uh, is it three angels? Uh, is it three angels doing this or what? No, Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Yep. Yep. kind of tells us how God disseminates messages. Okay? So when we read verse 1, Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave him. So God gives the message to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then who does Jesus give it to? The next one he really gives it to, it doesn't say it in this verse, but if you go to all the letters to the churches, it's very mm -hmm. evident that Jesus gives it to the Holy Spirit because yep. at the end of each one of the messages to the churches, it says, let him listen right. to what the Spirit Here, says. Where Revelation like 2, 7. So right. He who is an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. That's right. Yep. So it goes from God the Father to the Son mm -hmm. to the Holy Spirit. Yep. Then if you follow the sequence, it goes from the Spirit to his angel. Uh -huh. The angel talks to John. And John talks to us. Yes. So that's God's way of relaying mm -hmm. messages. Mm -hmm. He has a chain of command that the okay. message goes through. Okay. And so, so what we're what you just said then is it's not three angels. God, what God does, He give He gave the message to an angel to give to the people, and and just like God, He always uses human instruments. Yeah. Right. He uses us to share the message, and, and we see that in the we see that throughout the Bible times. Right. right. And we have a whole list here. I'm going to pick just one to read. Um, many, many times in the Bible, people are called messengers. Yeah. Here's one, Matthew 11, 10. This is John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Who, again, was a, who foretold the coming of Christ. He was right. a messenger. Mm -hmm. And it says, for this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. There's John the Baptist being called a messenger. And the Greek word for messenger is angelos, which is the same word that's being used for angels in Revelation. That's very important right. here. So if you looked at the original word before it was translated into English, in other words, that word three angels and, and that word messenger that Brian just got through reading, it's the very same, same root word. word. That's right. So yeah. that's very important. And, so it's a messenger is what it yeah, is. There's God's multiple, messenger. Yeah, there's multiple instances within the Bible yeah. where, and for sake of, you know, uh, time management, we can't read every one of these passages, mm -hmm. but in Philippians 2.25, Ephroditus is called, uh, Epaphroditus is called a messenger, which is angelos. Mm -hmm. You have in James chapter 2, verse 25, James calls the spies that went to Jericho yes. messengers. They were messengers. And, and they were angelos. Yeah. Yeah. Angelos. Yeah. Yeah. Very same word. Same word. Okay. Stephen's face shone like that of an angel when he was talking, uh, defending himself to the Sanhedrin, mm -hmm. and that's the same word. Okay. Angelos. All right. So very often humans are called angels, mm -hmm. 
in the New Testament. Okay, that makes sense. Messengers. It makes sense yeah. to me. Like for instance, when we when the Great Commission that God gives uh, that Jesus gives us in Matthew twenty eight eighteen uh, through twenty, if we read that, uh, it's it's a it's our commission to go into the whole world. Mm -hmm. Now, who's God sending into the whole world? You want to read that? Yeah, I'll read that one. Yeah, Matthew twenty eight. Yeah, twenty eight verse eighteen through twenty. So we know we know who followed Jesus for three and a half years, all right? Yes. To so disciples. So mm -hmm. Jesus gets to the end of his ministry, and the work he started had to go forward from that point on. Mm -hmm. It wasn't supposed to stop after Jesus left. Right. So the, the logical ones he would entrust the message to would be the ones that followed him, the ones he trained, all right? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happens here. In verse 18 it says, Then Jesus came near and said to them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples. Who's he talking to? Yeah. The disciples. Right. He yeah, says then, he yeah. said, mm -hmm. All of you, you go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am always with you to the end of the age. So this is just what God has did. He's chosen to use human beings, right. instead right. of angels, to be his messenger. You ever think about this? Why he didn't choose the angels? Why didn't he just use angels to spread the gospel? Because I'm because I'm more believable with my next door neighbor or my co-worker than anyone else is. Yeah. He picked the most credible people who have hopefully the most amazing testimony to what God has done. That's right. And, and, and he has given us this incredible privilege of sharing this message. And, and as Eddie was reading, it says, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And I can hear people going, But, but, but I can't do that. Mm -hmm. God says, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to do it. I'm going to give you the power. Through my power, yeah. you're going to be able to be a messenger. That's right. So when you look at, at how that chain of command, how God relays the message we saw in Revelation 1 1, mm -hmm. we see that. John is not left by himself to no. proclaim the message. No. He's aided by the angel That's right. in order to give the message yeah. to the people. So whenever we go and we share the gospel, we have the power of the angels on our side. So we should never be afraid. That's right. All heaven who, is who are also granted, yeah. granted to give that power from heaven itself. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's so right. all heaven is interested in this message. And all of heaven is back, back this message through the Holy right. Spirit. Right. Uh, well, and I want to bring up a good point here too. The reason God has not chosen angels is because we, the, those angels, have not experienced the grace of God because they've never needed these angels here. Right. They've never sinned. They've not experienced the amazing grace of God. Us humans have failed. We are fallen people. We have been saved by grace. And uh, and, that, and that is going to become even more vivid in the coming weeks as you begin to realize how the grace of God plays into these final messages. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Amazing and, grace. And we have, the, we have a, cre a level of credibility in sharing this message that no one else in the universe has. That's right. right. On any other planet, where Acts 1, Acts 1, yeah, that's Acts, where I was going to Acts yeah. 1, 8, Read this, this, yeah. this verse right here. Acts 1, 8, Take this kind hand. of uh, yeah. cements mm -hmm. this idea that God has chosen Yes. humans and not angels to carry the messages. Um, Acts 1 verse 8 says, uh, let me find 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. And see who's coming on us? The Holy we Spirit. Have, we the have, Spirit we, of God. We're aided by God's Spirit and the angels um, um, as, uh, come on you and you will be my witnesses. So He's talking to the disciples again, right before he is taken up to heaven. Yeah. He says, you will be my witnesses, not the angels. That's right. Yeah. You yeah. will be the witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. And Rick, you have said so many times in sermons at our church about the fact that you're not a preacher. No. You testify. Yeah. And, and, I'm a witness. And, and, the, and you're witness to, and the fact that people can argue about theology all day long, yeah. but they can't argue about what God has done in my life yes. or in your life. That's right. And so really what's going to happen with these three angels' message as we get into it, it's going to be us pleading yeah. along with God yeah. in the final message. And we are the most credible people yeah. on yeah. the planet That's Earth right. to do it. To our friends, to our neighbors, to our co-workers, to our family, 
that, that Jesus loves you, that he cares about you, that he got that he has a plan for your life, and that plan involves him coming back to get us. So praise the Lord, what a what a powerful uh, message this is. So so now uh, I think that, that all, all well all this is, is, is good here. So all right, where are we where are we at right now? Uh, so when we look at when we look at the messages and, and we want you guys to read them mm -hmm. by yourself this evening, maybe several times. And you kind of follow along with where we're going with this. We're just looking at some, some not the detail, but just the surface yeah. of, of the message. Yeah. The next thing we notice is that these angels fly in the middle of heaven. Yeah. What is so important or what is the, the, uh, uh, the important, not that it's not important, it's what I'm looking at, the, the significance of them yeah. being in the middle of heaven. Yeah. Well, that they're, they're coming from heaven. They're, this is not coming... Right. This is not a message that comes from Earth. This is this is not a message that comes from a political party. This is a message that comes from God. Right, well, God. So yeah. I, I wrote a note. You know, we have some notes here, as you can well imagine. We're just, just winging this. <laughs> and I wrote a note to myself here uh, where it says, messages are proclaimed from the midst of heaven. And I wrote a note to myself says, this message is from the heart of God. Yes. We are, we are being blessed and privileged to share the message. But this is the very heart of God pleading and 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 wooing us back to him it's his love and it's his love it's, a, it's the love of god and um i love you know we have isaiah 66 1 down the important and it says heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool where is the house that you will build me and where is the place of my rest the idea that that this is a message that comes from i mean you have a an ambassador to a particular country, and he brings a message from the king or from the president mm -hmm. to another country. And that's a very special thing to do, is to carry a message from an important person to another one. That's what we get to do. We get to carry a special message yes. from the creator of the universe to ourselves, and quite frankly, and to our friends, it, it, to our neighbors. And, and it wouldn't hurt for us to peek and look at it and read it ourselves, yes. too. You know? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if you look at Isaiah 66, what it says, Heaven is my throne. Yeah. That's the seat of God's authority. The seat of His reign mm -hmm. is in heaven. Yes. The opposite of heaven is the abyss. Yeah. And we know who's in charge down there. Yeah. Revelation nine eleven says it's the the devil that is that's his realm. Yeah. Of the abyss, and we'll we'll learn more about that as we go through. But basically, what this message is telling us is we have two opposite poles. Yeah. And this message will be a polarizing one. Mm -hmm. You'll either be up here or you'll be stuck yeah. down here in the end. The choice is ours in the end. So I'm thinking here, what I'm hearing you say, you've got a message from God that, that, that's saying, I love you and I'm coming back to get you. Uh, and, and I want you to come and I'm your life source and you can't exist without me. And then you've got the, the message from the world. Who's the prince of this world? Devil yeah, Satan. Satan is the mm -hmm. prince of this world. And, and that's right. And we, we see a lot of his wickedness. This world's getting darker and darker right now. And so are you going to listen to the world? Or are you going to listen to God? And he said, come out of the world. Mm -hmm. Come out of the world is what he's saying here yeah. in this message. Yeah, Revelation 9-11 says that the name of this angel is Abaddon or Apollyon in the Greek. And it's yeah. just, if you look at look it up in the lexicons, the Hebrew or the Greek lexicon, it just tells you it means one of the same thing is called destroyer. Yeah. And we know who destroys. We look at Job's life and we saw who did all the destroying there. Well, yeah. And, and, say, and, and I, I love the imagery, again, going back to Noah. You know, God said that the door is open, please. Yes. But at some point, that flood, that flood water for those who chose was, you know. Absolutely. And I think it's really important. I like, Brian, how we carry it back there because. We are setting in the very same place that, that, that Noah and his people were setting in uh, before the flood. Noah, God had a message to the world, mm -hmm. and Noah was proclaiming that message in the world. What were they doing? They, they were making fun of Noah. They were, uh, well, the Bible says in Matthew, we talked about this last week, that, that, uh, that the, coming, the second coming of Jesus is going to be just like it was in the day of Noah. Mm -hmm. What were they doing? They were eating, drinking, yeah, giving in marriage. marriage. Basically, what they were doing, they were caught up in the world. They were caught up in the world and the things of the world. And they were so wrapped up in it that they did not hear the, the message that God was proclaiming through his messenger. It wasn't so, internalized. 
and, and that's, that's the, that is the, the urgency of these three messages, is not just to hear them, but to respond to them. Oh. Well, and, that, and that's going to get, that really kind of takes us to our next one. But if you're counting, I don't know if we're going to make it to 10 tonight. Yeah, probably but, not. But if you're counting, yeah. number one is that we're messengers. Yeah. Number two is this message comes from the heart of heaven, the heart that's of God. That's right. Uh, so, yeah. from his throne. From his throne. From his throne. From so, the heart of God. So, if it comes from that, how important is it? Very important. This is the real deal. Yeah. You know? that's <laughs> how, I told you this is the most important study we've ever done. And, and, and I, Brian, you brought this up before you started here. In Revelation 14, verse 7 and 9, it, it uses the word loud voice or loud cry. Uh -huh. If you looked at the original wording there before it was translated into English, it would be megaphone, megaphone. like a megaphone. But you brought up well, something else that I was, was really looking, important. I was looking about last night, uh, and, loud I, cry. and if you have a, a Greek lexicon or, or an app that can do it, it's a lot of fun. But yes, it does mean megaphone. But I read down a little bit further, and it also says that the loud word can also mean great weight, yes. very important, and with great affection and emotion. So it's coming from God. It, it's coming from God. It's not just audibly loud. It mm -hmm. comes from the depth of a God yeah. who loves us beyond description, who is very emotional and, yes. and pleading with us. Yes. To, I, to come back. I mean, why to would connect he, with him? Why would he not be? Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, look what I, he went through. I mean, what? he, he died. He, died. he, he invested all. all of heaven in yeah. this. I mean, he is. Spent he, is it all. He, he sees his children standing on the edge, on right there at the Grand Canyon. Use the yeah. analogy you shared earlier. If you see yeah. someone, if you, if if you're at the edge yeah. of the Grand Canyon and you see someone who's in danger about to jump. You may, but you may, it may be with a loud voice, but it's going to be very passionate. Don't jump. Yeah. Don't jump. Yeah. Don't jump. Yeah. 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 There's going to be a certain there. level of passion. Yeah. So it is, yes, it is a, it is a shout. It is a shout yeah. that will be heard throughout Through. the universe, but it's also one that comes out of the, the great depth of love from our Heavenly yeah. Father yeah. through us. So as we were preparing this very important message, it really started sinking into us because I believe the Holy Spirit who was God's chain of command right. in our heart was helping us realize how important this message is. And it's from so from our heart we cry to you, please get this message right here. And 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 it's gonna it's it's a heartfelt message from God because He loves you. Come out of the world. Come out of the world and get in the Word. Jesus is the ark. He's the ark. I love that. And it's gonna be a loud cry. A loud cry meaning that He wants everyone to hear it. Um, I think I mentioned earlier about when Noah, you know, was building the ark that he had that 120 years, and I, I said seven wonders of the world. God made sure that everyone had an opportunity to get on the ark, and He's doing the very same thing now, friends. He's making sure that everyone. This will be a loud cry that will go to everyone because He wants everyone to hear about this. Jesus is coming soon. You know, as we get into this and the weeks to come. Um, this is a message that's sometimes not easy to share. No. Because it is one that is proclaimed, need to be proclaimed with unmitigated power. In other words, there's no lack of power behind this message. Mm -hmm. God has entrusted to us, but what we have to share is some heavy and difficult things. Oh, yeah. It's going to ruffle some people's feathers, but we can't soften it. Because it's God's plea. It's not our plea. Well, we God want to share it in love. We want to share it, it in love, it, uh, like well, God, it, from His heart. Yeah, I mean, but as we get in, we'll see that there's some difficult things to share. But we know that um, that God is love by sure. nature. Yes. And so all these messages are given as a last. That's why we call it God's final plea. Yes. God is pleading with humanity to open their heart. Again, I, I, for two weeks in a row now, texts have come to the table at just the right time. It's a God thing. Praise the Lord. Um, someone shared Revelation 117. So I'm going, okay, well, what is that? I mean, I don't know Revelation forward and backward, chapter and verse. This is the very beginning, John the Revelator. And he's saying, and when I saw him, capital H, he said, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me saying, 
do not be afraid. I am first and the last. And, and it's, it's encouragement from God saying, yes, this is sometimes seen, and it is a serious message. Yeah. And it may be a scary thing to say, I'm going to be a messenger? Mm -hmm. but, but right here, John the Revelator was comforted and told by God himself, don't be afraid. Yeah. I'm the first and last. I'm the Alpha yeah. Omega. I've got this. I'm with you. That's Not right. only personally, but I'm with yeah, you right. as right. you share this message. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, Matthew 28, uh, we read it a while ago, but I've, I've got to bring it up again because it just, if we're not sharing this on our own. Who's with us? And that, that is the message. Who's, who's, who's with us? Jesus is with us. He says um, in verse 18, Go, go ye therefore in, uh, let's see, where is Matthew 28, 19, yeah, 18. I thought it started at 18. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and I am with you always. Uh, he's with us all the way as we as we are his messengers because because we don't want anybody to be lost, do we? We don't want anybody to be lost. It's time to make that decision for Jesus. And now uh, a next point that's brought up here is these angels, you know, the angels. We know that the angels are messengers. Uh, the angels or relaying the message, but we as messengers are the ones going out to share it. But, but angels are flying. It's, it's like it's flying out over uh, everywhere. It, uh, to me, that brings up the urgency of this message. You know, angels, it's coming from God, from the throne room of God, from a God that loves us, a God that cares about us, uh, a God that spent all heaven had to, to purchase each one of us. He, he spent it all. And now, now he's making this plea because he's not going to force anybody. But it is an urgent uh, an important plea that we get here. So um, and we talked earlier, though, about the fact that Revelation 14 has been in in Bible since scriptures took place, and you realize that you say, "Well, where's the urgency then?" And and what we're gonna what we're talking about and will be unpacked in the weeks to come is the fact that when this message is is proclaimed just before Jesus comes, as we talked about early on. That's where the real urgency comes in. But at the same time, without being negative, there is also a sense of urgency for me today. I am not guaranteed my next breath unless God sustains my life. Mm -hmm. There is a sense of urgency for me to connect with God every day. There is a sense of, of importance for me to take my relationship with God, my my faithful relationship with God, seriously. So you really have two different senses of urgency. There will be, and we're going to really look at it later, right before Jesus comes. But there's also a sense of urgency for Brian Yeagley in 2021 that yeah. I get right with God and not be not procrastinating sure. on the words I wrote down here. Uh, we, you know. We'll 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 set at Jesus' feet one day, and we'll know how urgent this was. Because uh, I take myself for example, I was I was forty years old before I gave my life to God, and I wish that I had given my life to God so much earlier. Because because I could have been a witness for Him, I could have been a messenger for Him. Right. I had so many friends that I could have influenced for Jesus. And uh, it just breaks my heart that some of them that went into Christ's grace that I didn't have an opportunity to witness to. And I think uh, if nothing else is an urgency because it, it's it's of now. But we don't know what tomorrow holds either, do we? I mean, as we go home, as as go home tonight, I mean, something could happen. We don't want that to happen. But tomorrow is not promised for any one of us. Yeah. So today's the day of salvation. Now, you, you think of, you think about initially there in the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> Right after the fall, sin placed a veil of separation between us and God. Mm -hmm. From then, from that point forward, the Bible clearly shows us God has been working to remove that separation. That's right. He mm -hmm. wants humanity yeah. and divinity to be face to face again. Absolutely. Yeah. So no wonder he sends these angels yeah. flying. The fastest mode of transportation that we know of, you know, at least here, yes. he's making them come to circle the globe yes. as fast as yes. they can yes. with this message because he wants to bring to it, an end to it 
So yeah. they're, they're, they're reuniting can take place. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the thief on the cross, God's willingness to for that reconnection to happen in a moment's notice. Yes. It was a, it was a glance. It was it's a few words from from the thief to Christ, and mm -hmm. that reconnection took place. Yeah. That's right. And uh, so there was a sense of urgency for us today, and we're going to really unpack in the future weeks the sense of urgency when this message goes out with a loud cry yeah. right before. Yeah. yeah. So it, it kind of dual. Revelation 14, verse 6. Let's let's read Revelation 14, verse 6. We've been talking about a lot, but I want to read, re, just read the very start of this. Revelation 14, verse 6. You ever get there first? I got it. it. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Revelation 14, 6. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Okay, there it is. God doesn't want anyone to be lost. He says this message is universal in scope, right? It's universal to go to everyone, every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Uh, not not just the Jews, you know, right? No. Uh, no, no, no. This, this is a message to everyone. When, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, right? Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I think it is important to realize that um, this is this is a universal message. This is this is not a message given to one type of people, to one anything. Especially, this, we're not breaking it down in denominations, are we? No, no. Uh, and, this, and, is, this is in the Bible, friends. Well, right? I, what's interesting? What's interesting is if you go to John chapter ten. Where Jesus talks about the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. He says, I have sheep in many folds. Yeah. But there will go a message out. It says, Jesus says in mm -hmm. John 10, a message will go out and there will be one shepherd yeah. and one flock. Yeah. Yeah. So there will be a message that will bring all these children from wherever they are. Yeah. It's together. all about Jesus, friends. Well, right. and all he's the shepherd. Jesus. He's the shepherd. Yeah. And he's yeah. the ark. That's right. This is the message for the messengers. Yeah. Uh, you look at you look at the idea of the, the ten virgins, and there there were ten people from church, all all headed to the wedding, and five weren't completely set up and ready to roll. Mm -hmm. Self deceived. Yes. Yeah. And so and so this is a message that is for everyone who Christ died for, which is yeah. all of us. It's for all of us. Yeah. Universal. And it's it's a message that will go around the world right before Jesus Christ comes. It will be it will be given before Jesus Christ comes because because just like Noah, everybody's going to have a chance to get into the ark. Everybody, and and see this lines up with our great commission that we read just a little That's bit right. ago in Matthew chapter twenty eight eighteen through twenty. Also in Matthew twenty four, Jesus talks about the signs of the times right before he would come, and he he lists out all the things. You know there was going to be wars and rumors. First there's going to be a lot of deceiving, right. a lot of deceiving going on. Then he says there's going to be uh, earthquakes and, and wars and rumors of wars and, and uh, the, other, the other gospels are going to be, you know, the, the tsunamis and crazy weather patterns and everything like that. All these are beginning of, of, the, of the, what we call we, the, the uh, birth pains, the, the birth pains last week. And, but then he says in verse 14, he says, and this gospel, this gospel should be preached to the whole world and then the end is going to come. And that's going to be one of the first things that we're going to unpack next week is yeah. the idea of this, this amazing gospel message. Yeah. Everlasting gospel. So verse 6 says the everlasting gospel is being preached by these angels. Yes. And Jesus says in Matthew 24, 14, that this gospel, gospel will be preached. the same thing. It lines up exactly yeah. what that's Jesus right. said. Yes. So the, the message starts with the good news of what Jesus has done for us. That's right. Yeah. And that yeah. everybody can get that's, on the ark. It's open for everybody. That's right. It's open Praise God. Yeah. Powerful. Uh, see how the Bible is tying together here. Everything it ties together. You know you got truth when, when that happens. So an interesting point that I thought of. If this message has to go to the whole world, mm -hmm. then God must have a group of people across the world that's going to preach this. He does. He's I got, mean, if he's going to have messengers... It can't just be the three of us. Yeah, and I'll say something else here. You're not in trouble. Yeah, yeah. We're in trouble. I'm, I'm going to say something really brave here. I'm going to say something really brave. This message, this gospel, the gospel truth is going around the world right now. 
And he has got all different kind of people involved in that. And all different kind of denominations involved in that, right? I mean, if just one denomination would be have a hard time right now to preach the whole gospel. I'm telling you what, we, it takes all of us. But we're all coming together under that one fold to the Bible. All of us are going to come together under following the Bible completely, 100%. Coming out, all people. We're all sharing this message. We're all preparing the world for Jesus Christ in return. We're all sharing the good news about the gospel that, that God loved us so much that he was willing to die for us. Think about that. That's powerful. It, we are shining a bright light around the world right now telling about the love of Jesus. Okay, so, if you're okay. keeping, if you're keeping yeah. track, we're on five. We've, we've had we're messengers. We've had it's a, it's a message from heaven. It's a loud voice. It's universal. It's it's a, a fast and speedy message. And I, I don't know if I looked all five, but yeah, um, yeah. it's all five. But then number six. So you got to be proclaimed in the proper order, one message at a time. The yeah, first so, message. Yeah, because if you if you if you go there, if you look at it, it says another angel in verse six, and then it eight. says verse eight. Another yeah, angel, angel followed. Yeah, the first angel in nine says, another mm -hmm. angel followed the second angel. Mm -hmm. So the one follows right after the other one. Yes. So the first angel's message must be preached and accepted before the second angel's message make any sense and can be yes. accepted. Mm -hmm. And then if the second message is accepted, then the third message makes sense. Yeah. If you read the third one and you don't understand the first or the second one, the third one doesn't make any exactly. sense. And as we were talking about this earlier, probably the easiest way to illustrate this, because we, we want to leave the details for future weeks, yeah. and we don't want to spill all the beans tonight. Right. Go back to the story of Moses. The first angel, Noah. Noah. The first angel in that story would have said, Noah's building an ark. Mm -hmm. There's room for everybody, and this ark can save you. Second messenger would have said, there's a flood coming. Correct me if I'm wrong. There's right. a flood coming. Right. And it's destructive. They didn't understand what a flood was, let alone rain. Um, third angel was the angel that was saying, please get in the ark. Yeah. And, and so it is a sequence. Or there's, this there's, is what's a, there's, a, there's a preparation for yeah. there's a There's danger and a consequence if you don't accept. That's right. And then yeah. there's that final plea. Yeah. And uh, that's what was so amazing to me is to watch my granddaughter watch that, um, it was you know, a depiction of the story yeah. of Noah, yeah. to mm -hmm. watch the family plead with their friends and neighbors. And that's, that's our third message. Yeah. You know, um, to me, they have to be in order because, because without knowing the gospel, the gospel is where the, the, the power of God is. Yes, right. It's the love. Yeah. God, God has chosen love to win people's hearts. Not fear, not force, not threats. He's chosen love is what he's done. In the cross of Calvary, the gospel, uh, the very heart of the gospel is that God loves you, friends. He cares about you. He knows everything about you. He still loves you. He came to save you. He came to save you, is what he did. And the hint is, it's an everlasting gospel. You look in verse 6 that we just read. This, this, this first angel's message is one that we are going to live and bask in the glow of for eternity. Mm -hmm. What an incredible message that is. Yes. Praise <coughs> God. Well, we, we are, you know, I, I, think, I think we've laid the table out really good uh, for, for this. And uh, guys, why don't we look at some closing thoughts for tonight so we can kind of wrap everything up. And then what we can do then is, is um, we can lay the table out for, as we dig <coughs> in to this, this beautiful three angel message even more next week. Uh, any, uh, any final thoughts or anything you want to cover now before we, we start kind of closing, closing the table up here? I, I don't have anything really brilliant mm -hmm. other than the fact um, you know, I was thinking earlier this evening, so often before the President of the United States gives a State of the Union address, um, his press secretary, the chief of staff, whatever, releases 
that message and the media gets a feel for what that message is going to be. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but think about the fact that we've been given an advance copy of the script for this final message. Yeah. And, and the reason for that is because God's heart, the same passion and the same emotion that is going to go into this final cry to God's people, this final plea, is given to us tonight. It's given to those who have battled and perhaps lost with COVID. Yeah. It's given to people tonight who are fighting with cancer. And God is, is calling yeah. all of us. Yeah. Because like we said earlier, our next breath is only a gift from God. Yeah. And to me, I see the fact that I know what this message is ahead of time. It shows me the heart of God. Mm -hmm. Not only for his end time children in in future days, weeks, months, whatever you want to call that. Yes. But this is a call to me tonight. It's a call to you tonight yes. to to um, to get on the boat, yes. to use the Noah analogy. Yes. From the heart. From the heart. It, yeah, and, it's and a it, heart cry from God. Yeah. Yes. To get on the boat. Yes, Ian? A couple points and I want to end with a little story. Yeah, good. Um, as you read through these messages, first of all, we see the love of God like we brought out this evening, but there's a couple other things that I think is very important to understand. It's a polarizing message. It's the message that ripens the two harvests at the end. Mm -hmm. And you'll read that in, in, the, in those messages. The one harvest is the one that Jesus reaps, and that's that he uses a sickle for. That's mm -hmm. the grain. That's the righteous people in the end that are reaped at the final harvest. But the other harvest is also ripe when the wheat's ripe. Mm -hmm. Because you know, if you think of Jesus' parable, he talked about a guy owning a land, piece of property, he sowed good seed, and then while he was, he was asleep, the enemy came and sowed weeds. Mm -hmm. And he said, the servants wanted to pull the weeds up. And he said, no, 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 no. Now. Let them both grow until the harvest. Right. Then we'll separate them. Okay. So this is a separation message. This is God's final plea to humanity, like we've said. He is calling a people out yes. for him. So it's a polarizing message. Ripens are two harvested. The grapes are harvested, and they are outside the city. If you read the third angel, and the, the wheat is inside the city. So it's a life and death issue. Is at yeah. stake with these messages. Yeah. Even though the third angel's message seems to be dark, the good thing is there is a faithful remnant mm -hmm. that survives. And we see these messages bookmarked by Revelation 14, verse 1 through 5. It talks about 144,000 that stands on Mount Zion with the Lamb. And Revelation 15, 2, where it talks about a large group of people standing in the sea of glass. Mm -hmm. So the message will have its intended effect. And it's going to be empowered by a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the two points I wanted to throw in there. Okay. But here's the story, very interesting story. It's a story that developed out of, or comes out of the seeking of the RMS Lusitania. Now for you guys that might not know what that was, it was a big passenger liner that got sunk by the Germans mm -hmm. that basically pulled the United States and other allies into the First, First World War. But listen to the story. There was an art dealer by the name of Joseph Devine that had an understudy that was very interested in, in, in somewhat of a, a buff on pottery. And so Joseph had bought this young man a ticket to sail on this ship. To mm -hmm. Europe, Lusitania. yeah, on, on the Lusitania yeah. to go to Europe to look at a bunch of pottery, interesting pottery there. And of course, Joseph saw this warning that the German government sent out. It said anything that flew a Great Britain flag or any Allied flag was a a, a target <laughs> for yeah. their submarines to mm -hmm. take down. And so Joseph pled with this young guy. He said, "Please don't go on the boat." And so this young man replied and he said, do you think that I'm going to put preparation for such a, such a great event as this up to the last minute? 
He said, from the time that I heard the first warning about the Germans threatening to, to torpedo this passenger liner, I've made preparation. He said, the first day I sat in a tub of ice water for 30 minutes. He said, this morning I was able to stay in the tub for two hours. Well, on May 7th, 1915, the Germans torpedoed that passenger liner. And he was on there. He was on there. Over 1,900 people died. He was one of the 761 survivors. He made it for five hours in that frigid water before yeah. he was rescued. He prepared. He had prepared. Yeah. We cannot put preparation yeah. on hold mm -hmm. at any time. Okay. Sweet. This is a message that we all should take to heart yeah. and we need to respond to Jesus' plea for us to to once and for all give our heart to him for good. Yes. Not to take it back. Amen. But to stay with him. Amen. And, and that's really, you know, to give a, a, a short synopsis and we're going to unpack it a lot further in weeks to come. That's really what the three angels' message is, 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 is a heart cry from a God who has given all for us to, to get back in the boat or, or prepare, prepare right. for some rough sailing, whatever, right. however you want to look at that. Right. Yeah. But the bottom line is, he's told us, I will be with you. Yes. All the way to the end. Yeah. Friends, this was a powerful Bible study. And I want to, my wrap up thoughts is that Jesus loves you. He cares about you. This whole Bible right here, this whole Bible is about a God that has sent a love letter to you, letting you know that he cares about you. He, 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 every since the very first sin in the garden, God is, his, it's been his, he put his whole life, he gave everything. He, he, he gave his only begotten son to fix a broken rela relationship so that we could be restored. God is going to restore this beautiful, this is good news. This is not a scary message. This is good news about a God that loves us about a God that paid all for us. Uh, I, I said here in a message I gave, you know, this is a love story. And Romeo and Juliet has nothing on this love story that, that, uh, that we find right here in the Bible. God loves you, and he's coming back to get you. And he's, he, he's this, the only place that he can warn us. He can't use, he can't use, and I use this all the time, he can't use Fox News, he can't use CNN. He's chosen the Bible, the Word of God, to send out this megaphone, mm -hmm. heartfelt message that he loves you and cares about you. Friends, we cannot exist apart from God. Our heart beats because of God. And, and, and he's coming back to get those that has a heartbeat for him, that loves him. He's coming back to get those that, 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 that cares and, and, and wants God in, in their life. Friends, do you want God in your life? I pray that you that you would hear this heartfelt cry from his word to you tonight that he's coming back soon. He is coming back soon. And it's time to get on the ark. Everybody can go. And just like with Noah, one, there's going to come a point in time when, when the ark is going to close, the door is going to close. And whoever is just is going to be just, the Bible says, and whoever is unjust is going to be unjust. It's going to be as simple as that. But nobody, nobody has to be left out. You can make that decision today, and that's our prayer that you do. And we're going to talk a lot more about this yeah. in the future because this is so important. I hope this has waited your whistle. I hope that it's, it's made you hungry and thirsty for even more because we're going to dig even deeper into it. Um, Rick, I want to go back to Revelation 117 that came from one of our listeners. Mm -hmm. And perhaps for some people, when they hear the phrase, three angels message, they go, well, that's, that's, that's scary. That that that. It, it just, I can't do that. It, it's a frightening message. And I think you have really explained that well, but I love, again, this idea, do not be afraid. Yes. I am, I just lost my place, um, I am the first and the last. The one who yes. brings this message has us covered from the beginning to the end. Yes. He's gone, he's gone to the cross for us, and he's saying, this isn't a scary concept, this isn't no. a scary message, don't be afraid. I have you covered. It's coming from one that died for us. That's right. He died for us. That's 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 who it's coming from. He's going to be with us. So, all right, it's time to do some prayers. I hope uh, you know. I don't want to get. I don't want to find out 
James 4 2 says we have not because we ask not. There is a 100% guarantee that God can't answer a prayer we don't ask. So let's ask. Let's don't leave anything on the table tonight. What can we lift up to God for you? Uh, like Brian said earlier, put it down in your comment section. Uh, if you uh, listen to this later on during the week, a lot of, a lot of our friends do that. They listen to these, uh, uh, these messages later on during the week or later time. Go ahead and put your comments right there because we will check the comments and we will pray for you. Okay? I've got a very, an interesting praise message that, that goes into the idea that this is the message that is going to go to the whole world. Yeah. Someone sent in the fact that a man in Ethiopia, he's a refugee camp, he's in a refugee camp, is able to listen to Hope Channel, which if you don't know, that's a Seventh-day Adventist both radio and television channel worldwide. He's able to listen to Hope Channel on his phone. And the note just says the gospel is going to the whole world. God, going to the whole world. Here's a man in an Ethiopian refugee camp who still has the ability to hear the word of God. That's right. You know, everything is set up for this gospel to go real quick. We've got satellite radio and TV. Uh, this message can go to the whole world just like that. God's got everything in place, but he just don't want anyone to be lost. He wants everyone to get this message. Uh, I want to say hello to Jody. Jody Boyd out there, part of our church family. Uh, Jody, we love you. We're keeping you lifted up in prayer. Jody lost her husband, Jim. He's been a, they've been part of our church family here online on, on Facebook uh, for some time. And, and our heart goes out to you, Jody. And we're going to be keeping you in prayer. So, um, what are some, here's a request right here. Carolyn, having some muscle spasms in her side. Let's lift up Carolyn tonight. What are some of the other things that we can lift up, guys? It, I know. Well, you, you think about, um, and I mentioned, I think, this last week, we talked about Jody's loss. We have a, uh, an employee family where I work who uh, just a few days ago buried a brother mm -hmm. um, who, due to COVID, other issues, he, he eventually died from that. So yeah. a, lo a lot of people hurting tonight. COVID, COVID related. Uh, then, then there's just the other things a lot. You know, we're living at the time of the end. There's just, there's a lot of hurt out there. There's a lot of confusion out there. Uh, I think that we should pray for those that, that Jesus wants to reach. There's a lot of people out there. You, you've got friends, you've got family, co-workers that, that don't know that Jesus Christ loves them. And probably they've got an incorrect picture of who Jesus really is because they wouldn't run from Jesus. They'd run to him if they got a clear picture of who Jesus is. So we need to pray for the lost, and we need to pray for the hurting. Uh, God needs, God needs, uh, he needs boots on the ground. He needs people involved. He's chosen, he made it very clear from our study tonight, that he's chosen the messengers to be you and me. It's us. We are his messengers. We, we are his hands and his feet uh, that's going to go out and prepare a world for his soon return. So we need to pray for that. We need to pray for all the school teachers that are out there. Uh, uh, it's so difficult now to, to be a school teacher. Mm -hmm. We need to pray for our teachers. We need to pray for the students. I don't know how in the world that students can comprehend anything with all the chaos out there in, that's going on right now, but we need to pray for the students. We need to pray for the medical workers out there on the front line. Uh, they're, some of the hospitals just are really right now, they're, they're just being flooded. Here. I, I talked um, to an ER nurse this weekend and talking about the repeated exposures they get. Yeah. And I said, well, do they make you stay home? And she said, oh, Brian, she said, if everybody that's exposed that's on the front line stays home, there wouldn't be hospital workers anymore. She yeah. said, we just have to press on. So, that's uh, yeah. guys, I really have a, on my heart to pray that, that those out there that, that, that are in the world, just caught up in the world, that we pray that somehow they would hear this loud cry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Brian, would you start us? And we can, mm -hmm. I think we've got time. We can all have just a short prayer, uh, not a long prayer, but a short prayer, and then I'll close this up. Okay. okay. Jeremy, Father, tonight we just claim you as, as our Heavenly Father. We thank you for being our creator and our sustainer. We thank you that when we cry, you cry. When you we rejoice, you rejoice. And tonight, Lord, we just ask that you would come close to those in our listening audience who, who may have struggles, maybe worried about a child, worried about a job, 
worried about so many different things, Lord. Lord, please make yourself known in a real way to these yes. individuals tonight. May they see the love of, the, of, of a God who sent his only son to the cross for them. May they realize how important they are to you tonight. And uh, Lord, may we who are watching also be in tune to people who need to see our boots on the ground. They need to see Jesus in us. And, and, and may we have the courage to be lights in a darkening world tonight. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I agree with that prayer. Lord, we just ask for your spirit. Mm -hmm. We know that these messages are just a bunch of words on a piece of paper mm -hmm. without your power behind it. We can't even accept and internalize this message without your spirit in our hearts. So, Lord, we, we pray for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. You said that we have to worship you in spirit and in truth. And those who seek you with all their hearts will find you. So, Lord, this evening we, we come before you and say, Lord, we're, we're seeking as best we know how to. Show us how to do it even better. And Lord, the way we want to live our lives is to, is to bring glory to you in every facet of our life. Um, thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the promise that, that even though you know, even though we as, as humans know how to give good gifts to our children, you've promised that if we ask you for the Holy Spirit, that you would give that to us. So Lord, yes. we plead for your spirit this evening so that we can get ready and remain ready until you come, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, what an what a important Bible study that you've given us tonight. Lord, we pray with a megaphone voice, a loud voice, a heartfelt, heartfelt, from the very heart, from the throne room of God, that this message would go out and, and bless those and touch those lives that you intend for it to touch. There's so many people out there who need to hear this message that, 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 uh, that, that there's a God that loves them and cares about them that's coming back soon to get them. Lord, I pray that, that lives will be touched around the world through this, this time that we've opened up your word tonight because you know we know through, through the Holy Spirit and the power of God when you, when you go with this message that, with, that, it can go, that it can go places that we can't go humanly. You can do that, Lord. You can put it on people's hearts to share this message with their friends and their neighbors that live around here, but also live in other places. Please do that, dear God, for your glory. Uh, Father, we want to lift up special prayers for Carolyn, uh, that you would you would help her, that muscle spasm in her side, that you would put your hand on her. We pray, dear God, that you would be with Jody mm -hmm. right now and just fill that empty spot in her heart with your hope and your love and your peace and even joy, Lord. Thank you, dear God, for loving us so much. And thank you for the clear picture that you've given us tonight that you are coming back. And we can look forward to this day that there won't be no more pain or suffering or tears or death, Lord. What a wonderful day that's going to be. And in Jesus Christ, then we pray. Amen. Friends, Jesus loves you. And remember, the best is yet to come because Jesus is coming soon. Praise the Lord. <laughs>